Hey everyone, welcome into the K0LWC Ham Shack. Today we're talking about SWR. What is it and why should you care about it? If you're a new ham, you've probably heard of SWR by this point, but maybe you're unsure exactly why you should care about it. Well, we're going to answer that in this video. Now here on the right, I have my combination SWR and power meter. This is a Yaesu YS500, actually owned by John, KA0KMJ here in Minnesota. Thanks John for lending me your meter for this video. I actually have a Diamond X300 vertical at around 40 feet in the air I'm having SWR issues with, and we are going to diagnose it, take a look at those problems here on this video, so stay tuned for that. Now, SWR meters are fairly simple devices. Let's take a look here at the back. On the back, you're going to notice two ports, one that's labeled ANT for antenna and the other for TX for transmitter or radio. So you hook up your coax to your antenna here, and then you hook up a coax jumper that runs from your radio to the SWR meter. So basically, you're putting this meter in line in between your radio and your antenna. Now, taking a look here at the front, every SWR and power meter is a little bit different, so your mileage may vary. But on this one, we have three ranges, a 200-watt scale, a 20-watt scale, and a 4-watt scale. This adjusts how it reads on which line here. The reason that's important is if you're trying to do some testing you know, on some very low power settings, you obviously would not want a 200 watt scale. On the right hand side, we have some more controls uh, in regards to power and SWR, forward and reflective. And of course, we have a tuning knob here on the right hand side. Now, another helpful piece of equipment in your ham shack as you get started is going to be what's known as a dummy load. Now, this is a OPEC DL60 60 watt dummy load. And okay, if you're wondering what the hell is a dummy load, a dummy load in the most basic sense simulates an antenna to your radio. So if I plug this dummy load in the back of this SWR meter, I'm going to be doing it purely for power testing. I really want to test the true output power of my radio. The radio thinks it's transmitting its voltage to a perfectly matched antenna, which is this thing, but it's not. All that RF power goes into here and it gets dissipated across this heat sink and you'll feel it get hot as you transmit more and more. So this simulates the perfect antenna to trick your radio so you can do some true and accurate power testing. If you want a link to buy this one, I recommend it. It's a great one. I will put a link down in the description where you can buy this dummy load. So check the link down below. Now, before we get any farther, you may be asking yourself, okay, what is SWR? SWR is sometimes called VSWR and stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. Now, in the typical ham shack, a radio or transmitter is connected to a feed line or coax, which is then connected to the antenna. So when you key up your radio and you're transmitting, it develops a radio frequency voltage that goes down the transmission line to the antenna. This is what's called the forward wave. Think of the forward wave as the energy or the power from your radio that goes to your antenna that your antenna radiates. Now, if your antenna or coax has a problem, uh, this you know, transfer of power from your radio to your antenna will not happen the way it needs to. And that can sometimes uh, lead to what's called a reflective wave to come back towards the radio the opposite direction down your coax. So the relationship between forward and reflected power is what SWR measures. And this leads to an obvious question. Well, who cares about SWR? Well, if you have a high SWR, you can have uh, decreased performance in terms of power output, uh, receive capability, and most importantly, you can actually damage your radio if your SWR is too high. And you definitely don't wanna do that. So SWR is very, very important. So how do you know what a good SWR is? Well, the smaller the ratio, the better the match between the radio, the transmission line, and the antenna. So a perfect SWR reading is one to one. That means 100% of your power will be transferred from your radio to your antenna. As a general rule of thumb, anything under two to one is considered a good match and is acceptable. Uh, as you get above two to one, it starts getting a little iffy. You're starting to lose more power. There's more inefficiencies. Anything above two to one, you definitely want to address. Now, what about that like critical, oh no moment? Anything above three to one, you are truly risking some significant damage to your radio, whether over time or immediately. Three to one, four to one, 10 to one. I mean, if your SWR is above three to one, uh, you definitely don't want to transmit at all until you figure out what's causing your issue. 
A high SWR can be caused by a lot of different things, but they almost always involve your antenna or your coax. And most often than not, it's your antenna that's the problem. Uh, things like an improperly tuned antenna. So make sure the antenna you're using is tuned properly if it needs to be. Um, take a look at your coax. Um, are the connectors on tight? Are they secured tightly? Um, are there any kind of nicks, any open damage to the coax that could let water in? Um, or I said, just any way it affect the shield or jacket of the coax? Is your antenna placement out of whack? Um, are you too close to metal siding? Um, is it radiating off something nearby that could be causing an issue in terms of where you place your antenna? There are just so many things that can cause a high SWR, but just know that always look to your antenna and your coax. That is where your problem exists. So let me go ahead and get my uh, LMR600 uh, all plugged into the SWR meter, and let's check out how my antenna up at 40 feet is performing, and let's figure out if we can see what the problem really is. All right, now that I have all my coax uh, hooked in, you can see I have my black LMR600 here uh, hooked in from the antenna, as well as I have a gray uh, RG8X jumper plugged into the D710. So the first thing I need to do is calibrate this meter to make sure I'm gonna get an accurate reading. So uh, the first thing I wanna do is make sure I'm on calibrate, which I am. I am on the very top end of two meters. Let's key up and make sure that my needle is matching up with the calibration mark here on the meter right there perfect now that i've done that i'm going to switch to swr make sure i'm on reflected for swr readings here and let's take our first reading so i'm up here at 147 980 the very top of two meters and let's check to see what the swr looks like k0 lwc all right so we're about 2.2 to 2.3 to 1 uh here at the very top of two meters that's not good uh, again it's not a complete terrible swr it's not super worrisome but it's not great um, definitely not where I want it to be. Now let's take a measurement in the middle of two meters. So I'm trying to get an understanding of what is the SWR doing over the entire two meter band. So I'm gonna take a measurement at the top, in the middle, and then at the bottom, and then compare those readings. So here we are at 146 dead even, K0LWC. Just a nudge lower, maybe 2.1 and a quarter to two. What that tells me is I have a feeling that when we get down here to 144, this number is going to look a fair bit different than what we've been seeing here on the first two readings. So let's drop it down to 144.020, um, do another reading, K0LWC. All right, so take a look at that. That's 1.5 to 1. So uh, what this is telling me is I'm getting lower numbers here, lower on two meters. What that means is my antenna is tuned to perform best at the very bottom of two meters and actually the way it looks probably more like 142 to 143 megahertz so uh, if you go back to basic antenna theory um, the length of your antenna is what determines what frequency um, it is tuned to work on so if this is reading that it's resonant at 142 or 143 because it's a lower frequency that means my antenna is too long it's too long of a radiating element. Um, that's what I, this is telling me because as I go higher up into two meters, it gets more and more out of resonance. Um, and that tells me that it needs to be shortened. So when I put this antenna together, I do recall when I attached the coupling in the middle for the radiating element, uh, the bottom element that actually hooks to the coax pulled slightly. I thought that there may have been some, you know, some give with that and that it was okay or that it was just an adjustment um, that wouldn't throw off the SWR in terms of the element, but guess what? It did. Uh, it may have pulled it a quarter to a half an inch up and that was enough to lengthen the length of the antenna and that is what's throwing off my SWR. So it was my error when putting it together that I just tugged on the radiating element too much and the set screw was loose uh, and it pulled it up out of where it needs to be for proper SWR in two meters. So uh, again, my SWR is not doing great, but if you remember back to earlier in the video, it's not three to one. So what I would do to combat this is I would probably use this radio throughout the winter on a lower power set. So for me, using this primarily for local repeaters, operating on low or medium power really isn't a big deal. I can do that and have no problems whatsoever getting into local repeaters. So that's probably what I'll do throughout the winter time to just kind of limp it along until the snow goes away and then I'll get back up on the roof, take it down, make my adjustments uh, and get it back up in the air properly. This time, testing SWR before I put it 
back in the air because Lord knows I don't want to have to do it all over again. I have a very steep and very high roof. Not a fun time to get on top of that guy. So there's a quick rundown of what you should be doing when you get a new antenna on the air. And this goes for your car as well as your ham shack at home. Uh, invest yourself in a nice meter like this. There's lots of good meters on the market. Uh, this will be something you keep for years and years and years and will serve you well over the entire time that you're a ham radio operator. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, subscribe for more great ham radio videos. I'll catch you again next time.